other podcasts one by one who are these socials that clip is why people make fun of you with carl this is all just for the radio and, and why mike? mike we don't have business to take care of who are these socials we are the number one podcast on the internet today Welcome to yet another episode of WATS, the show thousands of people come to to answer the age-old question, what's the deal with social media? You can't find a show that does a better job highlighting just how much social media sucks. I'm your host, Carl Hamburg. With me, as always, is Mike Geary, a.k.a. Blind Mike. What's up, Mike? Guys, we are getting the nice Florida ambiance today, and if you listen very closely, you can hear Carl's Cape Coral neighbors bitching about John Melendez. It's sweet. (laughs) I'm actually in uh, Tampa today oh, we have sorry. the live show tomorrow <laughs> night at the uh, the airbnb you know mike some people are saying i won't read super chats that are coming in but after upgrading my flights to tampa i will read and appreciate every super chat that comes in and i'll There's even blind i'll probably even interrupt my blind co-host in a rude manner to do so and uh, i do want to point out that we do have new personalized jingles if you super chat us 25 dollars or more you get a personalized super chat jingle and we do appreciate that from the folks who support this show now mike the way we start this show is with some world-class banter best in the biz sure and 
I want to get right into it today because uh, we're going to Hulk Hogan's bar after the show is done. I'm going to drive over there and meet up with uh, the people who have traveled into the Tampa area. Yes, so, so perfect setting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We went to um, Glory Days restaurant last night. Oh and my then, god, uh, this is all yeah. Jesus. It's it's unbelievable, <laughs> right? And then and then listen to this. I'm uh, commuting to work today, which I'll get into in a second. And didn't I cross over Dale Mabry, the uh, oh the famous god. road where the Walmart <laughs> is situated? And who's our so, waiter but Patrick Michael? Would right. <laughs> no, it, it's funny. We we were talking about. I was talking to Tukey, um, who's here at the Airbnb. We want to find out the bar that Chad supposedly got his black eye and yeah. Oh, yeah. just go over there and, and like do a skit or something. We'll put something together for it. So like we'll be it. looking for that. There's a lot of landmarks, a lot of WATP landmarks here in Tampa. Yeah. I really should have put that together because me and Carl were talking before the show and he was pointing out some things in his neighborhood and I was like, that's odd that he hasn't noticed those before. <laughs> I just <laughs> realized you weren't at your house. <laughs> I don't know why you thought I was in Cape Coral, but I, I, just, I guess I understand. So this is what I want to talk to you about, Mike. This morning I did something I haven't done in many years. I set my alarm, got up early, got dressed and ready, and then commuted to work. I did a uh, an interview with this guy, Matthew Cox, who's a YouTuber has a great YouTube channel. He had me over to uh, his place to record an episode and I'm driving through rush hour traffic and it's annoying. And I remember how much I hate this. So to all those people who get up and drive to work every day, God bless you. I hate it. I can't do it. I'm done. Hey, you're, I'm out. You're fucking idiots. Haven't you listened to John's? Haven't you learned anything from John Sirisani? Quit your jobs and yes. do this. It's very easy. Start a company worth millions of dollars and then sell it. What's exactly. so hard about that? Lazy pricks. You noobs. It's your problem. Um, all right. Since I mentioned that I do appreciate the Super Chats, let's get into it. Yay, Super Chats. Will Daffodil, two bucks, says, hope everyone is having a good day. I am Will Daffodil. I'm having a very good day. Thank you for that. Drunk Engineer, who helped me out a lot with the uh, prep for today's show. Evening, gents. I have some legal issues I need help with. Anyone know a good constitutional law scholar that won't be busy making YouTube videos for the next six months or so? Well, yes, drunk engineer. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about Chili De Castro getting his comeuppance. Plenty We're of time to read literature, about I suppose. Bone We're up on very his <laughs> excited about that. Uh, KJ with twenty dollars. Thank you, KJ. Any chance of WTP live in Boston? It's funny you ask that. We were talking quite a bit yesterday about what other cities we want to go to for live shows, and Boston kept coming up over and over again. Really? Yeah, you guys. Yes. I'm surprised you guys haven't done Boston. You've done uh, Chicago. You haven't done Philly yet, have you? We did. We did Philly last year. Okay, we've yeah. Done then you got New York do City. Come on. Yeah, we've done New York City. We've done Philly. We did uh, Chicago, Detroit. So yeah, Boston makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I, I like Boston. I, we should definitely time. get over there. Jay Lorder. Oh, I should check to see if KJ has a uh, personalized jingle. I've been lazy about some of these personalized jingles when people come in with their super chats, and I apologize for that. Sometimes you have to uh, remind me, like this guy. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat, Jay Leiter. Carl appreciates the support and wants to ask you to translate Husey's words into understandable English. Five bucks. Jay Leiter says Chili's channel name may change to delete farts. Hashtag delete farts. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, I, I, get what <laughs> I think we'll probably about. keep the branding, even though he's in <laughs> jail for the next six months. Uh, now we have CMOS 4044 coming in. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat. CMOS 4044 is such a fan, he even helped Carl install new paneling in his basement. He says, I watched the court proceedings yesterday. I can't wait for this. Oh, yeah. We got we got some of the highlights for you today. Uh, like Rolling Stone, two bucks. Mike, how many fingers am I holding up? That's three. a trick question. It's always three. Don't fall for that, Mike. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat. Mongo, even though Tuki is well on his way to a primetime network soon. We appreciate the support. Mongo 20 bucks says, I've been sick and missed a lot of shows. Carl, the OG Frosted Tips were still my favorite. I love Blind Mike. Please read this to him and the room. Thank you, buddy. Hold on a second. Mongo, I've been sick, so I've been missing a lot of shows. When you're sick, that's when you get to catch up on all the shows. I would shows. think, yeah, what are you doing? What are you usually? doing? 
<laughs> I mean, you better Let's be taking you away from this. You better be hospitalized, sir, or else I don't <laughs> think that's a good excuse. Joe Dicker, five dollars, says Carl, keep your head on a swivel. You're in Kumia country. Oh, don't I know it, Joe Dicker? I will definitely be on the lookout. That'd be great if two thugs beat the shit out of you and no one believed you. Oh, <laughs> like, I no, come I on. Swear. I come on. Uh, I get home and I come on and I have a black eye. And they're just like, all right, Carl. <laughs> a bit's a bit, but. Here comes the money. Here we go. WATP thinks Joe Dicker is a fantastic super chatter. Carl is pretty sure Joe went with John to Jamaica just to buy him cool's lights. All right, now back, back to the show, everybody. <laughs> Mike, we got to get started with the program because, uh, like I said, there are things to do that we need to get to. So I want to get started on Instagram. Blinded light, blind Mike. Don't be a douche. Instagram in the night. Blinded light, blind Mike. Check out these reels. They might make you want to fight. I think we were both put off on that jingle when it first came to us, but it's everyone's favorite now. Oh, I like it's very yeah. catchy. I just don't know that I understand it, but I'm. It doesn't make point, any I'm sense. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doug was just looking for songs that had the word "blind" in them, and it's just like, yeah. all right, this works. And, well, <laughs> yeah. okay. You know what's a good thing? There's not a lot of songs about people who have are club-footed. Yes. <laughs> that would that would definitely enter into the show if that were there's the a song case. called chompers there's gotta be oh they oh that's very possible now <laughs> that you mentioned it all right check this out this is a uh instagram reel no ma'am i'm finna tell my side of the story because she already told her side of the story what happened was i drove all the way up here to get a plan b and I like to come to this store because in my neighborhood they always locking the plan b's up because people keep stealing them like me this store, I can steal as many Plan B's as I want. And I'm only saying it on the camera because I didn't steal it. So when I go in here, I come and get a Plan B at least every other day. I need one every other day. I don't want any more kids. I walk inside the store, right? Reach up there. try. Uh, what are your tits for if no one's coming on them, ma'am? What are you doing? <laughs> what is going? What is with this community where no one can pull out? This is insane. Is there's a difference between not wanting any kids and being like, I'm just letting strangers come inside me nonstop. <laughs> right. It, it seems like your strategy is off. But all right, you're going to get your plan B every other day. Fair enough. Try to grab it. And then the lady yelling in a wheelchair, she on a little aisle talking about don't grab it because the associate is about to help her. Get up and get it yourself if you want it. I'm not finna not get the last, the very last plan B on the shelf just because you can't walk. Like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> So I told her what I had to say, like, you should have got up and got it, or you should have got a stick or something, knocked it down. That's The reason I didn't go to jail is because the lady came, rolled over my toe, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm finna do her in. Like, I'm just like, I'm finna just do this. I did not know people in a wheelchair, upper body strength is so strong. That lady <laughs> pulled me down to her level and started doing my head in. That is so embarrassing. And no, I didn't steal before you said I didn't have a chance to. Yes, she got the last plan B, but I don't know. I didn't go to jail, so I don't know why the news is out here. But I didn't bully nobody in a wheelchair. She beat my ass. That's just how that went. Yes. So what I think is fun about this is that yeah. she thinks she's in the right. And there's two oh, reasons absolutely. for that. Yeah. She did nothing wrong because, A, she lost. She got her ass kicked mm -hmm. by, by the person in the wheelchair. And, B, she didn't even steal the plan B that she was going in there to steal. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter that she was assaulting a person in a wheelchair. But I no. that to me that was part of it that as a member of the disabled community, I kind of like that we're being treated like everyone else. Like if I <laughs> if I go for a plan B as I often do, I might yep. have my ass beaten just like a regular person. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's like it reminds me of there was a video game, hockey video game game called Blades of Steel. And Blades of Steel was was one of the great video games. Because you would get into fights, and the person who lost the fight got the penalty. So you'd go on a power play if you won the fight, which is how hockey should be, honestly. It's a <laughs> great idea. But I like this one was just like, yeah, I got into a fight with a woman in a wheelchair. She kicked my ass, so I'm not in jail. Oh, so you lost the fight, so you're free. Okay. You got to give double props for the broad in the wheelchair. A, she won the fight, but B, I think more importantly, she's getting loads pumped into her like a champ. Like, that's... That's oh, an that's... impressive person in a wheelchair. <laughs> I didn't even think of that part. That she's a, she also needs the plan B. Wow, that's impressive. Good for her. Right? Yeah. 
I often say it's a man's world, but I, in this case, I don't know. Not anymore, Carl. <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> Wake up. Speaking of uh, being a man's world, Mike sent uh, this clip over to me, and he says uh, this is a good way to expand our reach. Well, Carl was talking to me like, how do you find new audiences on YouTube? Yep, and I said, Carl, yep. you got to get in touch <laughs> with new demographics. That's correct. we got to expand. Like right now, our audience is 99% white, 1% undecided. So, sure. yes, how do we reach other demographics? And I think this yeah. is probably some good pointers. The secret of selling to the Negro is expressed in one word. That word is recognition. But perhaps because he's had so little of it, the Negro needs even more. I want to point out that <laughs> this is from 1954. It's yeah. called The Secret of Selling the Negro. and But its message it's, is timeless. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> good point. No, what I was going to say is I think that this is like a training video for retail sales. Yes. Like legit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, really. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. This need is a very real and important one. It shows up even in many of the Negro's shopping habits. Anyone who sells or wants to sell to the Negro customer should know about some of these habits. To begin with, most Negroes buy by brand. They ask for products by name. They're quick to turn down off brands. Now for the second. The Negro buys good quality merchandise. Symbols oh, of progressive quality and prestige for the 50s, are very important to the Negro. No, they're, this is complimentary, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> like they wrote this, and they're just like, yeah, no, we're going to give these Negroes some props. They're going to be happy yeah. with this one. I, I will say there's an element of, hey, there are no bad pit bulls, just pit bull owners to it. Like, sure, they're <laughs> talking about them like they're a different species, but for 1950, <laughs> this is progressive. <laughs> <laughs> don't run and cower they might have money on them that day you can they sell smell them a fear. <laughs> that's good negro customer this woman for example is buying fine crystal wear but she is also buying the admiration and approval of her friends and relatives it's a well-known fact that many negro customers are influenced by the opinions of others well, well, I got to stop you right there. That's true of all customers. So I don't think it's just, I mean, they could just say, this is what customers want. A guy in a meeting in 1950 is raising his hand. What kind of rich would you call that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gone over the term yet, but I'll get back to you. <laughs> and here's the third thing to remember when selling to a Negro customer. When he specifically asks for one thing, don't try to sell him something else. If you do... He'll probably react something like this. Doesn't he think I've got the money to pay for it? Oh, thank God. So, I like that they, <laughs> he reacts like this, and then they show him thinking this thought. Is this guy telling me that I should not get a Lexus, but I should look at the Toyotas because he doesn't think that I have the credit score? Is that but the again, problem here? Again, for 1950, I did not think we would be panning to a human being. When they said they might be at react something like this, I thought it was just going to be a wild beast. So tip of, tip of the cap to them for for being very progressive for the time. But also, once again, don't try to sell me shit I didn't ask for either. That's all true. right, <laughs> this is just true of people in general. But all right, he wants not, not like Whitey. Whitey will fall for anything. You can sell yeah. him any bullshit. They're dopes. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's an idiot. To be sold on quality, not price. The Negro buys by brand, he buys quality, and he doesn't like to be switched at point of sale. These are the keys to selling the Negro customer. I like that they're like, he buys by brand. Yeah, I mean, you could try something like FUBU, and it might fool him for a little bit, but eventually they'll come back to Nike. So that's not going to work long term. Now, for most stores, we're sorry for wasting your time, because these people aren't allowed in, of course. But <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'd like to see this video on how they sell to Puerto Ricans. I want to see what oh. the, the differences are there. Interesting. This exotic yeah. beast. <laughs> <laughs> now, he might have just come from the pawn shop where he got rid of his neighbor's <laughs> bike and has a few shekels in his pockets. I don't know. That, that yeah. seems wrong. Now that, it really now that I say it, 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 it could have gone a lot worse. I'm very impressed by, uh, by their No, it's hilarious. Though. It's yeah. very funny. Here comes the money. Here we go.
Thanks for the super chat audio file, America. Keep this quiet, but Carl emailed you high quality MP3s of John's album to save you the trouble of downloading it on the WATP Patreon. Audio file America, 10 bucks says, if you want to do a live WATS in Seattle, Blind Mike knows a great club with tons of openings. <laughs> yes, I think uh, I think Carl will be right up their alley. Uh, the I club love canceled Florentine in them. <laughs> I know. I was talking to the club owner here in Rochester about that video that you guys were playing of the owner of the comedy cellar talking to those yeah. two assholes. They did not come prepared for that conversation, did they? No, Gnome did a great job, but yeah, they he were did. just de deer in the headlights. <laughs> uh rock o o or b 2002 10 bucks says you should talk about plasma masterdon an old fart on youtube who did a crap song covers and people loved him until he turned out to be an in real life herbert from family guy uh -oh. all right make a note of that yeah send me the name yeah we'll, we'll figure that out and then uh i'm very excited to be playing this jingle here comes the money Thanks for the super chat penis wrinkle. You should be the first to know Carl has left the isotopes to be second guitarist in the amazing band Stiff Minister. Everyone in my high school was wearing their t-shirts and writing their names on the walls and desks. Thank you, penis wrinkle. He says, let me get that sweet penis wrinkle jingle, baby. You got it, buddy. It's about time, quite frankly. Melissa Young, gifted one. Thank you very much, Melissa Young. We appreciate that. And Destin Nee, five bucks, says, Why do black people call each other Monica so much? They always like, what up, Monica? That's fun. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you say that's fun? <laughs> yeah, it is. All right. Let's go. Let's see. Since we're on Instagram, you know who's always on Instagram. I was actually talking about this guy um, on the show that I was on today with Matthew Cox. Oh. Because uh, he was talking about these these tough guys who just flaunt so much online that you got to think there's some insecurity there. There's some weird shit going on. I'm like, well, have you heard of John Sarasani? So <laughs> I think I might have introduced a new fan. And uh, this is his latest boast, if you will. You know, I woke up this morning overlooking a world-class golf course in the Pacific Ocean. I woke up in this beautiful fucking suite. I'm like, well, John, anyone could really buy that suite. Big fucking deal, John. You're a $50,000 millionaire. No, listen close. What? I own the fucking hotel, all right? Do it's you? called the Via. It's in Newport Beach. This motherfucker's part of the investment group that bought that. Well, how did you get to do that? Well, not by doing status quo bullshit. Well, you came for money, right? No, I didn't come for money, bitch. I came from Schomburg, motherfucker. Okay. Who's he arguing with? This is the thing. This guy's videos. He thinks that there's someone on the other side going, oh, yeah? Well, you're an idiot. Oh, am I an idiot? Because I just bought this hotel. Oh, so being part of an investment group is not owning a hotel, yeah. in my opinion. But Isn't that like me? Like if I own uh, a Schwab ETF being like me and Charles, you know, <laughs> we both but, own this. Yeah, I think someone makes that point. <laughs> okay, well, explain. Nothing to explain. The regional director of the Southwest region of vice presidents doesn't get to buy hotels. You got to do shit out of the box. Change your family lineage, motherfucker. Let's go. People downstairs walking around with badges. This is my badge, bitch. 2,000% raise, motherfucker. Wow. He stopped censoring his channel, I noticed. Remember when he used to bleep those? <laughs> no, he does and he doesn't. There was another video that I didn't send where he, the, the bleeps, some nail it. Some he bleeps out a curse word, and some it misses by about three seconds. So he still does it, but he picks okay. and chooses. I don't know. Yeah, that true. one he didn't even try. But he yeah. has the text going with the overlay whenever he, he says an F or an S. He yeah. puts the 2000 on there, which is good branding for the company that he doesn't own because he no longer works. I, I can't point this out enough. John's big brag is that I don't work for a living anymore. All you guys are still working jobs, making your $350,000 a year, you idiots. I don't even have a job because I started the company and sold it. Meanwhile, he's constantly working. This is work right here. He's grifting. Yeah. He's and getting people That's nothing on to board. be embarrassed by. Here's the thing about no. John Sirisani that we can't say about every lol cow is like, I believe him. 
I think he has money. I think he's done very well in business. Of course. I think a lot of what he claims is absolutely true. So you don't need to pretend that you're not working. Like, if he just had a channel that talked about poker or whatever he wanted to, it wouldn't be as successful, but there wouldn't be as many people that he's that are laughing at him that he's arguing with in the comments all the time. Correct. Correct. All right. So... Of course, John's always arguing with people. All right, I want to introduce you to my friend, Harry, big hairy chest. He actually goes by the name Harry Harrington. And look at his bio. He talks about how big and how strong he is. Look at that squat. Look at that bench. You're stronger than me, buddy. You're bigger than me. But you know what you're not, Harry? You're not crazier than me, motherfucker. You can't teach crazy, bitch. You can't weight lift your way into crazy. Anyway, buddy, you said this. You compared me buying this hotel to you buying stock in Tesla or Apple. It just don't work that way, buddy. Do some fucking research. Anyway, have a nice day. Now, I guess that him saying I'm crazier than you translates to I can make a fool of myself on the internet more than you, which, <laughs> yes, that's true, John, but I don't understand why that's a brag. You know how fucking crazy I am? Watch this. Nah, uh you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. Aren't I nuts? But he know, you know what he doesn't say in these videos? And maybe there's one I missed. But what percentage of the hotel does he own? Exactly. And also, but again, <laughs> let's say he is, let's say he bought the hotel. That seems to me like work. Well, <laughs> like he also, would now have a job owning a hotel. <laughs> I'll, I'll make it, I'll go even uh, crazier on this one. You know how they used to do that thing a few years ago where you could name a star after someone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for $50, <laughs> a star could be named Carl. And I'm like, I own the sky. Yes, you own That's, space. I own space. Did you know that, guys? Not during the day, but at nighttime, I own that shit. Pretty impressive, right? Yeah, an investment group by this hotel. Is it three people? Is it 75? Is, is it 8,000? We have no right. idea. He never mentions it. Well, it's, it's like owning the dolphins. You know, I think there's like 28 different celebrities who have a 2% ownership in the Miami Dolphins. Like, okay, right. I mean, you get a box. That's cool. That's fun. Yeah. But, but here's that. the thing. Like, if he does own part of a hotel that's great john terrific but don't present yourself as a hotel mogul now because you're not. <laughs> yeah, i know you're not a hilton <laughs> just because you put in somebody with an investment group right yeah it's not the sirisani inn yeah it's, <laughs> it's a very sirisani inn i would stay there that's a that's a pretty good point mike you make some good points sometimes yay super chats silence do good five bucks says when selling to the negro be sure to treat the Negro as a human and not how you typically treat Negroes. Oh, and don't call them Negroes. <laughs> you got to understand in the fifties, that was like patting them on their head and saying, good for you, buddy. That was, that was a person of color at the time. You yes. Know? You, you were being respectful. Uh, Joe Dicker, five bucks says they should stick a two after the word selling as it is. It sounds a bit pre civil war selling. They should, Stick a two after the word selling. Selling to the Negro? Selling yeah. the Negro? Oh, I, I, now I get it. That's a good point. Yeah. No, I get it, Joe Dicker. I'm sorry. I'm slow on the uptake today. Uh, Super Heavy Fun Chatter 2 Bucks says, Has Lady Doug Jingles made my theme yet? Super Heavy Fun Chatter, are you trying to sneak in getting your own personalized Super Chat by saying that? I don't remember you oh, being boy. on the list. Oh, is, this, no. is this the new con that people are doing? Uh, that's what happens when you have a great deal like this. You're going to get scam artists. Exactly. Actually, I do have one for you. Here comes the money. <laughs> Here we go. What an amazing super chat, super happy fun cheddar. Thank you. I'm sure Carl in the future will loan this to Vinny for people's refunds on John's March show. All right. Now back, back to the show, everybody. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the amazing super chat, Riku 3220. It is greatly needed to offset the worst business decision in podcast history for Blind Mike to go SJ free on his show. That's right, Riku 3225 bucks says, here to collect my jingle skull. Skull indeed. And look at this one. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, all the regulars are here today. We're playing a lot I of I know, jingles. this is great. This is fantastic. And, uh, want to comes in with $25 that's exciting super super chat super chat now Cars gonna read 
He says, Michael, Michael Motorcycle, please address a theory that Mersh doesn't exist, but rather is your alt alter ego while drunk, not unlike Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Break a club <laughs> foot tomorrow, Carl. That's hilarious. I had That's a- That's interesting. Uh, it's, it's possible. <laughs> no, it's not interesting or possible. I had a pre-production meeting with those guys today. We're, we're different people. Mersh and I are two different people. We might have the same physique at this point, but- Drew Peanuts, two bucks, says, not rich enough to afford a speech pathologist. I think he's talking about me. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's talking about John Sarasati. He's definitely could use some work. All right, we got to get into the main topic of the show today. We titled the show after this gentleman. We got to head over to YouTube. Who are these YouTube videos? Who are these YouTube videos? Oh. All right, Mike found something interesting, but before we get to that, we have to talk about what happened this week to Chile De Castro. He was in court, as he often is, and uh, some bad things happened to him. We're going to start off. This is just the very beginning of the trial, which is all online on YouTube. It's an hour and a yeah. half, and uh, he starts off by just being an argumentative prick. <laughs> what? A war. Yeah, I know. They're going to go to my marshal. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. And if you don't want to apologize, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I apologize to the court, Your Honor. No, you can apologize to... They've done nothing to you. Actually, Your Honor, when you were here, you came over and gave me a directive for no reason and started telling me what to do. Okay, well... I have, I have all the respect and welcome to the court. I follow the rule of law all the time. No, it is it is their their job to maintain don't. the safety and security of the court. I agree with you, Your Honor. So, if you want to speak like that in my courtroom, I'm going to hold you in contempt. And if I hold you in contempt, you're going to jail. That is not my wish. Okay. I wish you good. All right. So I need to you to empty your pockets too. <laughs> Two pocket pants pockets. This is, this is illegal. This is, this is illegal. <laughs> is I've read the judge. <laughs> I've read the Constitution twice. And there's nothing about emptying your suit pockets in there? Your Honor, do you know what a constitutional law scholar is? <laughs> this is hilarious. Suit jacket. I don't have anything on me. This is preposterous. Okay. This really is. There is something about taking your wig off in court, but nothing about emptying your suit pockets, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, it is. Me your phone too. Oh. They're recording everything. <laughs> they, have, they have a media request. Right, and I'm, I'm not recording anything. That your your guy here took my phone, so he's on his phone's not on. Right. <laughs> oh. You can take the lawyer's phone too. No, I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's an officer of the court. All right. So getting off on a, a bad start here, as he's arguing with the judge about what's legal and illegal. It's such a cornball move, and his he's in his like fifties, isn't he, Jose De Castro? Where, like, he has the energy of a ki uh, the cool kid who's been sent down to the principal's office. It's like, whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to harsh my mellow. <laughs> You're a fucking dork, Chili. Yeah, he, he goes back to class. He's like, oh, no, I showed him. I, I gave him a piece of my mind. Don't you worry about it. So now they offer some evidence, and uh, they're showing the body cam footage of which the reason why he got arrested in the first place. So this officer pulled a car over in a parking lot. Chili's standing there with his phone. And the officer's saying, don't engage with my driver. He's just trying to talk to the person. He's saying, back up. Get out of the way. Back up or I'm going to detain you, he says. And Chili's being performative here. He's putting on a show. She deserves privacy. You're being detained right now, and he's starting to come towards Chile. Right 
goes, don't put your hands on me. I am going to put my hands on you. No, you're not. Yes, he is. I so, mean, who could have seen a Delete Laws <laughs> video from that channel being used as evidence in court? It seems almost <laughs> impossible since we started covering him, you know? Well, this is actually, this is the cop cam. This is from the police officer's perspective. No, so, right, but, but I'm yeah, saying, like, a guy that is constantly badgering the cops right. got arrested? Who Fucking with police procedures, yes. <laughs> yeah. Actively interfering. So here is the actual altercation. Fast forward a little bit here. He's still holding up. Oh, oh, and now the cop just grabbed him by the shirt and is dragging him over towards his car. Jose Maria is not happy about this. There's two cops on him. And he's doing the thing. I watch a lot of cop cam footage. He's doing the thing where he's resisting arrest by not following orders while going, I'm not doing anything. I'm not resisting arrest. They're like, sir, you got to put your hands on your back. I'm not doing anything as he's throwing his arms up. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. <laughs> right, yeah, it's so fucked up. Uh, and it, at this point, he's yelling, my camera's still running. The officer says, I don't care about the camera. Like, <laughs> Chili always thinks that he's going to sue every cop. He's never successfully sued any cop. So Chili, he might. Sh Chili never thinks, like, do I look like I'm in the wrong in this situation? He's just like, I'm filming, as if that exonerates him. Well, I, so I was talking to that guy, Matthew Cox, that I had an interview with this morning, and he served seven years in federal prison. He's a, a con artist. And he talks to all these guys who think they're sovereign citizens. And he, he has these conversations with these guys who are just like, no, I know my rights according to the Constitution. And they had me locked up for four years. And they did this and that. He's like, yeah, so how do you know your rights? You were locked up for four years. So you don't know your rights. And, and I'm not even saying that the law always gets this right and that there isn't, you know, the state's not overstepping sure. things. I'm sure they are. But at the same time, like, you got to, like, be nice and cordial. And try to yeah. work through this is not helped by escalating this every time. I remember once when I was watching uh, the show Live PD, yeah. they, they pulled over a black a young man driving, like probably early 20s, and mm -hmm. his father was in the passenger seat. And the kid immediately was like, what was I doing, officer? Like getting confrontational? And the yep. father goes, "I'm so don't mind him. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, it was just immediately like, I know how yeah. to handle the cops. Shut the fuck up, kid. Yeah. It, it, I... There really should be PSAs or something. It's just like, just be polite. It's amazing how few innocent people would be shot if they just went along with whatever they were told to do and were nice. It's As the great Kevin Spacey once said, kill them with kindness, Chili. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, some of Chili's testimony. So he's called up to the stand. I do have a YouTube channel, and the reason I have a YouTube channel is because of how many cops kill people every year, how many cops hurt, main torture, rape, and kill people every single year. It's such an epidemic that the rest of the world, I get thousands of emails saying, only in America does this happen. I started filming cops because when I was cheated in 2002, Objection I Objection at this point, I, relevance. Well, this is the British Freedom Member of the Press. This narrative. <laughs> This is great. So now he's going on his spiel and, you know, the, the prosecutors there are recognizing what's going on here. He's going to start holding court and putting his show on. And they're like, okay, that's enough of that. We don't care how many, you know, whatever you claim is the reason why you started your, your channel. We're not buying it. That's for damn sure. Excuse me, counselor. Do you have a trifold? No, because you don't understand how important they are. I'm getting that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Let me get there. So here's some more of his testimony here. I was filming that cop because that's what I do for a living. I am a member of the press and I invoked my right to be press. I always invoke my right to be press within the first 10 seconds of engaging with police. And I have thousands of videos to prove this. So he's insane. So his whole thing is that this is a first amendment, right? Because I'm a member of the press and I'm there to report on this. And he really feels that that's what's going to get him off in this case. And everyone else is the idiot. And so that's why this verdict is so fun. And the judge, I have to say, I watched this. The judge is very fair, very patient with Chile de oh, Castro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a hostile environment. But when you call police officers pigs during court proceedings, you're not going to get as uh, easy a go at it. As if you were just polite and cordial no, to everyone. You're hostile in the courtroom. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Castro, please stand. The problem with the argument that your attorney makes is it completely fails to consider 
the safety of the officer, and the safety of the driver. The officer doesn't know who you are, and the driver doesn't know who you are. And you don't have any right to interfere with that officer doing his investigation and deciding if he wants to issue a ticket to this driver. And you are also don't have any business approaching the driver. The driver didn't ask you for help. The driver didn't say, help, help, you know. You didn't see an altercation happening between the officer and this driver. Um, the officer didn't protest that you were filming. There's no problem with filming. You can film, it's fine, all right? But you did interfere with his investigation. You did interfere with his ability to do his job. You did put him in a position where he is concerned for his safety and the safety of the driver. So I believe the state's met their burden beyond reasonable doubt. I'm gonna find you guilty of obstructing a public officer and resisting a no. public officer. Uh-oh. Found so. guilty. Oh no, he's been convicted, everyone. Who saw that coming? It is great. Like the, the the previous clip where he's saying all the same shit we've heard, where he's a member of the press and a constitutional yeah, yeah, law yeah. scholar, and I have a YouTube channel, I'm just doing my job, all that shit. How yeah. great is it after a year of covering this asshole that he is in court pleading for his freedom and yeah. still using the same stock lines that we hear him use in every video? Like, I'm surprised and... he didn't sh shoot out jackboot thug pig or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it is not working at all. Hey, dunce cap. Like, um, yeah, yeah. my name's, my name's your honor, not dunce cap. <laughs> all right. So this is fun because um, the judge continues to call him out on his bullshit. I don't think there's any intent from the defendant to engage in any wrongdoing in this case, Your Honor. Um, and that being the case, especially because of the public policy interests at, at issue. So when you say he doesn't wish to engage in any wrongdoing, it seems to me from observing him in the video that he wants, he wants this. He wants to get arrested. Yes! He wants to yeah. yes! get into an altercation with these officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. Right! Yes! He called the officers here in my courtroom today pigs. He <laughs> called me, and he's not his head up and down. So apparently he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. He's giving the thumbs up to the judge right here. So <laughs> obviously Chili sees this as a great opportunity yeah. to help his grift. This is going to give him credibility. Well, here's the, here's the problem, though. I think his first video back, people will be like, oh, fuck, what's he going to say? Hell yeah, hell yeah. But after that, it'll be like us covering him and dickbag patrol and all the people that already do. But that's, again, going to be about it. And his views are going to go back to what they were before. He thinks, like, the argument I've heard a bunch about Trump is, like, if they actually put him in jail, he'll just be a martyr. Like, people will right. rally around him even more. Chile yeah. thinks that of him, but Chile doesn't have, like, a base that really gives a fuck about him. <laughs> so well, it's not, not only true. Not only that, he what he's selling is, here's how to deal with police officers. Oh, good so, point. Yeah. Right, so <laughs> if... Um, a famous chef, it continues to just fucking burn all the food and then they put their <laughs> name on pots and pans. I'm not interested in Guy Fieri's overcooked <laughs> veal, you know? Right, that's a good point. So, so it's not going to help his trifold and everything else he's trying to sell when it's just like, yeah, didn't you use this and then you spent uh, six months in jail? <laughs> all right, think, one more I clip on here. Be... Oh, okay, go. I do have the sentencing. Good, and the, yeah. the perp walk here. This is great. Mr. DeCastro, please stand. I hereby sentence you to 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count one, 90 days in the Clark County Detention Center on count two, to run consecutive for a total of 180 days in custody. Thank you. 180 days. Suspended or? Oh, no. I'm going to start right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Oh, so uh, when are we going to get around to this 180 days you're talking about? Oh, it's starting right now. And they come in and put the cuffs on them. The torture cuffs. He's like, all right, great. I'll head home, take a nap, grab something to eat. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Go to glory days. <laughs> Travesty of justice. Travesty of justice. 
This guy has been whacking a hornet's nest every day for six and a half years. And he's like, these motherfuckers are stinging me right now. This is crazy. They're going for my face. (laughs) <laughs> What's wrong with these assholes? I gotta say, though, shame on Chili. We've been watching you for all this time. I'm very disappointed he didn't pull a Jesse Smollett in the courtroom and just scream, I'm not suicidal or something. You know? Yeah, he did miss an opportunity there. That would have gone viral. Definitely. For, for That's sure. disappointing. That is disappointing. All right. I want to get back to Super Chats real quick because we have another uh, OG coming in. Here comes the money. Thanks for the super chat, Miguel. We sure appreciate it. Blind Mike might not be able to see, but we know for sure he can at least smell that Carl has frosted tips. Miguel has a great point. Ten bucks says owning the hotel is less than a celebrity owning the Dolphins. It's a Packers fan owning the team. You get nothing. Good day, that's, sir. Yeah, that's a much better way. <laughs> that's a <laughs> great <stop>. analogy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Nate G two box said, "I would like to nominate that cop for WATS Hall of Fame." Yeah, good point. Finally, well, that is true. Yeah, we gotta we gotta honor that person in some way <laughs> for for sure. Let's follow yes. their YouTube channel. Well, I'm starting to go fund me or something. Kitty <laughs> gifted one. Who are these podcast memberships? Thank you very much, Kitty. Like Rolling Stone two box says, "Chili, what's he called or something?" <laughs> I gotta say. Some people might not think that's a great drop, but I know someone who does. Home run, call me a home run. <laughs> Pretty good the stuff. Judge, you're just like, you better put on a coat. <laughs> Chili or something. What are you, spicy? Rick U3225 bucks says, pro tip from a cop. If you're ever falsely arrested, just let yourself get arrested and enjoy your payday from the city slash county. Fighting only ends bad. Yes. These things, if, if you're not in the wrong, then you fight it in court. Yeah, fight it in court. Yeah, that's, that's he's never he's never very subtle when he screams about how he's going to sue you and how he's suing all these other people. And yeah. it's like, just let it happen. Chill. You know, act like you've been there before. Good point. Yeah, he's got to change his ways. He's got a new approach. It's time for a new approach. But he spent six months thinking about it and then come out with maybe a, a new thought on this. Yeah, he's got some time at least. Uh, Maui County GIS 10 bucks says, thanks for the great shows and the laughs. No, thank you. Maui County, we appreciate you, buddy. Bad at Karate Two Bucks says he's his own and only martyr. Yeah, well, right. Yes, he's rallying around himself, just like God. that woman that who invited them into her home because uh, their her child was killed by the police. I think about that every time I watch one of his videos. Is yeah. him staying at that woman's home and abusing it, just being a total asshole yeah. to that woman. Jamie Ten Bucks says Blind Mike rules. I agree, Jamie. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. And it Kitty is, gifted you, another. 180, Sorry, no. 180 days doesn't seem like that long to me. When you said six months, I was like, damn, we're going to have to free Chili. To get, we're going to have to break this guy out of prison. <laughs> I don't know if I can go six months without him. <laughs> well, it's funny. When I brought this up to a uh, guy and talk about Matthew Cox, who spent seven years or so in federal prison, I said, yeah, this guy we follow, he hadn't heard of him. So I was explaining this guy. And I go, yeah, well, he just got sentenced to 180 days. He, Matthew Cox was just like, do you have to pack your toothbrush for that? That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Standing on my head. Yeah, right. That's not even a thing. All right, so you sent me over this because it turns out um, Chili's been lying about something. Yeah, so this was covered by our boy Dickbag Patrol. He did a pretty good job uh, mm-hmm. uncovering some things because we always say he really glosses over his dealings with the law like it was no big deal. So Dickbag Patrol actually found out some um the, the, some of the claims that were made and some of uh chili's creepiness that went into his prior arrest yes he's sick describe any injuries bruises on hip and leg from trying to hold door closed from his kick oh yeah so let me just give a quick background on what this is the name of this video is surprise delete laws fake restraining orders are real yeah so now we're we're reading from the uh the person who felt the need to get a restraining order against this guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is probably a problem, I would imagine. He's sick. Describe any injuries. Bruises on hip and leg from trying to hold door closed from his kicking. Did the police come? Yes. If yes, did they give you an emergency protective order? No. Describe other abuse against you or your children. Jose broke into my apartment in October 2003 through the balcony door. I want to point something out about Jose, now Chili DeCastro. 
-hmm. When you change your name, there's usually a reason for that. <laughs> you're tr you're trying to get away from your past. Your name Are you running from something? No, yeah, I think so. No, I mean, oh, did, did Jose used to beat up his girlfriend? Sure, but Chili doesn't. Chili's great. <laughs> Chili's a sweet man. <laughs> Came inside and threw me into a wall, choked me, hit me, kicked me. Spit on me in my face and assaulted. By the way, when she says he came inside, Plan B is not going to fix this. This is a very different. <laughs> oh no, this is a punch. I much prefer a load of cum than yes, the, gift, the gift he was providing. Correct. <laughs> Redacted and threw him into a wall. Jose was yelling the entire time, threatening to kill me. And redacted. Jose also destroyed some of my personal property and destroyed sentimental items. He kicked a hole in my bedroom door at this time. He stayed in my parking garage all- Sentimental items? You think he destroyed her Funko Pop collection? This is brutal. Night waiting for us to come and go and chase us in his car while we were- End of available document. What did the person in two do or say to you that made you feel afraid? Jose was on my balcony for about 20 minutes before we noticed he was there. He threw a lighter at the door and scared Jesus. us all. Then he ran wow. from the back balcony to the door of my apartment and tried to get me to come outside. Jose climbed a wall to get to my balcony. He was yelling, threatening profanity outside and threatening to kick all of our asses when we left. <laughs> That's, what a guy. You're definitely going to win her back with that one. 20 minutes. Do you understand how long 20 minutes is? If 20 minutes into this podcast, we just heard... Hello, Lady K. And Stuttering John was just, right. just standing lurking. there. <laughs> just lurking behind me this whole time. Why didn't you warn me, Mike? You didn't see him? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he's a genuine, like, a villain. Like, he's, he's not yeah. just a creep. He's a villain. Correct. Correct. And uh, so we get more into the stalking charges here. Feel afraid. Jose pounded on front door of my apartment so hard that he cracked my door. The crack is still on my door. When he realized I wouldn't let him in, he went to the balcony and broke down four sheets of plexiglass that were encasing my balcony because I had cats in order to get in. He attempted to open the balcony door and was not successful. He was threatening to kill us both and threatening to do things to our cars. Then he tried to calmly talk Redacted into coming outside to talk. Mr. DeCastro has violated the order in excess of 10 times by placing Jesus. phone calls leaving voicemails, sending text messages, emails, and scenes stalking her at her place of residence. This is uh, Chad Zumach level 10, over 10 times? It's crazy. This? It's creepy. And then uh, Dickbag Patrol also did a very good job of breaking the whole thing down because Chili DeCastro has reacted to these charges before. Yes. Meaning just, just the idea of stalking and whatever. And yep. he chalks it up to like, hey, listen, everyone's had bad breakups. She made claims. I made claims. And so he, he throws it out as like a bad breakup where we both did things we regret. And Dickback Patrol points out this was over the span of six years. Like he was stalking this woman for a long time. Yeah, restraining orders aren't something that people do willy nilly. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, not to bring it back to Chad Zumach again, but I pointed this out with him. He has a very similar story. Well, you know, she had a new boyfriend and I was protecting her from this guy. It's like, no, no, no. You're the problem. The restraining order is against you. I don't know how you think you can spin this into something where it's just like, well, I'm not the bad guy in this situation. You most certainly are, sir. But, but let's say, let's even say there's a, been a misunderstanding and she okay. doesn't understand. He's just loving her and she files for a restraining order. I've never had a restraining order put on me, but I imagine if I did, I'm staying the fuck away from that. Oh my God. At all costs. Oh my, are you kidding me? Yes. I, mean, I, I've never had a restraining order either. Go ahead and look it up. I haven't. And the first thing I would do is delete that person out of my contacts. Yeah. No, but like, okay. Okay. You got it. I am as far away. I'm moving. Yeah. I don't want to go on a, I, I don't want to go on a bender and then mistakenly text this person one time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm deleting this person completely. So you said this over to me and just said, there's our guy. This is the chili <laughs> that we know. This was at the uh, arraignment, Plus, right? Oh, no, yeah, no. I'm sorry. This is, yeah. Weeks preceding this hearing, Mr. DeCastro has misrepresented the facts to this court regarding his counsel, has engaged in inappropriate outbursts in the courtroom and arguing with the court over simple matters of calendaring and procedure, and has even <laughs> violated this court's very order imposing the same restrictions of the restraining order that have been in effect since 2004. So this guy who should be pleading 
for mercy yes. and trying to explain I'm a reasonable man. You have to understand. Yeah, do I get emotional? Of course I do. I'm, I'm what is he, Puerto Rican or something? I forget. He's, he's Latino or You've something. You've been? Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, he's like, I'm passionate. This is what we love. What we love, we love passionately. It's sad he's, throw, he's in there being an out an total asshole in the courtroom with outbursts, disrespecting everyone. What do you mean, fire. 8 a.m.? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> That's great. So uh, this is the last clip. This is uh, this week. Yeah, this this is uh, this is what I was thinking when I said uh, yeah. for the arraignment. This was earlier in the uh, in the courtroom. Yeah. Um, Matthew Walker is a deputy city attorney who actually prosecutes this case. Depends on the office. I'm going to sue of, him for malicious prosecution. Okay. I'm going to sue everybody involved. I'm going to sue the cops. So I'm going to sue Castro, the county. I appreciate you have an opinion. Today's just the arraignment. I got you. I got you. Saying you're, you're all just, these things, we're just, here for your kidding. misdemeanor case. Sure. Okay. But the- He's always putting on a show. You notice yes. that? He's like, I'm going to sue him. I'm going to sue them. They're like, that's not what we're talking about right now. She's begging him throughout this. Like, yeah. hey, you know what? Save that for later in the trial. Right. Right now, just say you're pleading innocent. <laughs> that's all I need from you. There's a bigger there's a bigger issue. There's transparency in the courtroom, which is the best thing that could possibly happen. That's now the people right. get to hear that I'm going to sue Jeffrey, and I'm going to sue Matthew, and I'm going to sue every one of those So here's what we're cops. not going to do, Mr. DeCastro. <laughs> This is not going to be a personal pulpit for your, <laughs> you know, philosophical difference or belief. You have the media here, and that's fine. This it's is great. an open court. But I don't want you to start saying things too far extraneous um, for purposes of this misdemeanor charge. Because well, that's what. No, nope, do not interrupt me. <laughs> this is basically, if you remember when Anthony Cumia had his confrontation at Times Square. Yes. And uh, the other gentlemen were getting involved, and he's like, "This ain't your show. This is basically <laughs> yeah. this is what this woman is. This judge is telling, uh, Chili. I appreciate your charisma and right. your passion. This ain't your show. Yeah, exactly. Especially at the arraignment, where it's supposed to be like <laughs> not guilty. Like, okay, we'll yeah, see you all next right. week. Set a, set a day. Yep, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So stupid. Uh, Kitty, two bucks says live stream in jail. That would be amazing. I don't think you're allowed to do that in jail. Oh, Although Suge Shug- Knight, Shug Knight has a podcast from prison. Was that you right? You ever heard that? Yeah, it's it's fascinating. He's talking all about uh, P Diddy being gay, and he he comes out with all sorts of fun stuff on that show. It's animated on YouTube. It's it's pretty interesting. It doesn't sound great because it's from like a phone, but hey, in many ways, I hope Delete Laws gets the Suge Knight treatment. <laughs> Mongo coming in as a new member. Thank you for becoming a member on the show, Mongo. I appreciate that. Of course, you get two bonus episodes and a lot of things early. You can watch us do WTP live Wednesdays and Saturdays. Jamie Sixbox says, Jose is a sick son of a bitch that machismo gets nauseating. Yeah, I don't know who he's appealing to. Bad at cry to two bucks. Go ahead. It's just what I wonder about those guys is like, when has it ever benefited him? Like, does he make friends because he acts <laughs> like that? Like, what is what's the upside? When is it in his life people have been like, I'm, I really like when you act like that. Chili. No, you know what it is? I think that there's a lot of people, especially because of the allure of YouTube. It's so easy to start a show and then mm-hmm. build an audience. And he's got a lot of subs on his channel and yeah. he has thousands of people watching him. Like that to him is like he's winning life yeah that's because crazy. he's yeah. he's fig- yeah he's figured out a way to build an audience even though they all hate him and they're goofing on him and we're goofing on him and all that that doesn't matter because he's someone look at me i'm someone even though i'm i'm known for being irritating and annoying and unlikable but i'm someone well, <laughs> so. it, it, when you're as delusional as him you convince you can convince yourself we are the small minority and most of the people watching his videos like really love what he's doing, that he's giving it back to the cops. I do know people like that. Bad at karate two bucks says <laughs> this guy certainly sounds like a law scholar. I know the way he acts up in court. He doesn't sound like he understands the law at all. A fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Which day of law school do they say? Make sure to bring up your YouTube channel. <laughs> That's very important. <laughs> yeah. M- make sure at the arraignment to tell the judge how many people are going to sue by name. They always like that. <laughs> Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the amazing super chat, Matthew Rowley. This gift lifts WATP spirits even more than watching three hours of Corn Diff 3D printing a trombone when you can't sleep. 
Matthew Riley, five bucks, says, Last week I gave up my Catholic faith to follow St. John and the turn, and now nothing from our leader, Dang Lizard? I am lost. Also, Carl Good, Mike Bad. Well, thank you, Matthew, for that. I agree with everything you've said here. <laughs> because Dang Lizard was starting a religion last week on this show. Yeah, what happened? We're, what, where, where is he now? Maybe he's his, in front of his congregation. Doesn't have time for us anymore. It does make you wonder, though. It could be like uh, David Miskovich's wife or something. You know, oh. maybe maybe something. <laughs> I like I like how you think, Mike. I like where your head just went. Super super chat, super chat now. God's gonna read a super chat. Super. Chris Holm, who's skinny blind Mike, came in with fifty dollars, <laughs> and he's got the photo of him dressed as you. From when we did subreddit live in Rochester wow. a couple weeks ago, I hung out with this guy. We were we were hanging at the Genesee Brew Pub on Sunday after the show. He's a great guy. Uh, so fifty bucks. He says, "Blind Mike, look under the table to see if Carl is wearing those hamburger pants I bought him as a joke. Don't let him read this. He did buy me hamburger pants. I do wear them from time to time, but they're two XLs. They're very large." <laughs> they're very big on me. Hamburger, like pants with hamburgers on them. I yeah, they're like pajama okay. pants. They're covered gotcha. in hamburgers. Well, that'd be just fun. fun. You should wear those to Hulk Hogan's. I, you know, I didn't. I, fuck, I didn't pack them. God damn it! <laughs> I guess I'll just have to wear jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> darn, darn it all! <laughs> Kitty became a new member. Thank you very much, Kitty. And Jamie, ten dollars super sticker. Wow, Jamie loves you. You know, I'm obviously Matthew Rowley, not so much, but uh, Jamie definitely does. God damn it, it's starting to rain on me. It's starting to rain <laughs> on really? me, Mike. Yes, <laughs> it was not supposed to rain today. We better hurry up. I know, I'm going to. Let's skip uh, Michelle Marie Deline. Oh, oh and no, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna skip that. Also, I do right. want to thank, I got, I think I have to move my setup to get out of the rain. Yeah, it's starting to come down. Uh, I do want to thank Drunk Engineer for sending me a lot of the stuff that we did on Chili today. All right, hold on. I'm moving. <laughs> Boy, this is interesting. Yeah, I know. This is the opposite of what I wanted to have happen today. Because I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh, well, I could go wrong with me trying to do this from outside my Airbnb. I had to watch a retard for 38 minutes. And because of this goddamn rain, it was all for naught. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to it next week. All right, all we'll right. We'll get to it next week. I apologize for that. <laughs> because I know you did. You put a lot of work into that. It we was got work. We got a note from someone telling us to check this thing out. And I said, Mike, you do it. <laughs> Basically is what happened. I'm always happy to. And this he did. Tough. And he did, which was great. Uh, one more super chat real quick. Rocco Orby 2002 says, you think Chile will find religion in jail? Maybe the turn? If you're going to find religion in jail, it would be the turn, I would imagine. It'd be great if he came out and was quoting Dang Lizard. <laughs> yes there's a prophet that i found on youtube dang lizard guys i'm pro cop <laughs> all right let's head over to um tiktok tiktok society up by the chinese to fuck up the minds of our youth and some other people too so let's talk quite a lot about these tiktokers we stalk and know oh oh whoa tiktok fucking blows before we get to TikTok, though, I have to address Mongo, because Mongo just gave us $50. Yay, super chats. You guys are being very generous today, and I do appreciate that quite a bit. Mongo50 bucks says, been listening since episode 117. Yeah, illness sucks. Not funny, haha. Funny, uh-oh. To you and Mike, what's your favorite Spaz ONA bit? Mine are Spaz gets a credit card and wrecks the WoW van. <laughs> I don't know a lot about Spaz, to be honest. Only through references over the years. But um, I'm trying. I'm trying to think if I even have the right guy. He was one of the. He was there on the day of Sex for Sam, right? He was one of the. Uh, yeah, he was a little before chaperones. my time. He was a little before yeah. my time as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know what, Mongo? Mine is also when he gets a credit card and wrecks the Wow Van. Yeah, me too. Those were the days. <laughs> but I do want to say to Mongo, and yeah, we're not trying to make light. Uh, it sounds like something serious has happened. So we are pulling for you, as is the rest of the WATP and WS, WATS community. Yes, and thanks for supporting. Speed, Thank you for supporting the show. We, we do appreciate it. And Kitty coming in with a $2 super sticker. Thank you very much, Kitty. All right. Solar, of course, is over there on TikTok. And uh, Solar is a DID system. If you're a system and you know it, clap your hands. 
If you're a system and you know it, clap your hands. If you're a system and you know it, and your mask will truly show it. If you're a system and you know it, clap your hands. And that is a perfect jingle because this is Solar clapping back at the haters. <laughs> yes. Comment reads, not illegal. It's discrimination against a lunatic ideology, not gender. Nobody would care if you just kept your personal life to yourself. Nobody cares about your personal life. First of all, the way you're worded this implies that you yourself think that gender is an ide a lunatic ideology. Boom! And honestly, I just have to agree with you on that one. Whoa! Ooh. Sick burn, Solar! Oh, boy! I, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> little turnabout is fair play. Good I like stuff it, right there. <laughs> Secondly, nobody would care if you just kept your personal life to yourself, and nobody cares about your personal life. Um, uh, she's showing. Are you sure about that? She's showing her stats oh right now. She's got 1,900 followers, or she's following 1,900. She's got 82,000 followers, oh, 2.1 million likes. So she just went scoreboard, bitch. Yeah, motherfucker. Wow. Now you might say it's better if you just don't say that at all and let uh, people figure it out, but it's cool. Especially, to brag about it, I guess. especially when you are up in the game by quite a bit. You don't need to be the one <laughs> shit talking, but all right. Because I think uh, 82,000 people would beg to differ. Well, a lot of them are like Mike and me and just think you're a lunatic <laughs> and making shit up. They have a About wild 40, imagination. <laughs> right. It looks like actually um, nobody cares about your personal life. Yeah, so this person who's commenting on here isn't following anyone, isn't liking it, isn't posting photos, isn't posting videos on TikTok. It's almost like this person doesn't try to prove they're interesting and yeah. get validation through social media that was the big thing for me is it was the first time watching solar where i was like oh then it so it's all like a bit right like yes. you're doing it because you want to be famous this isn't you're right. not just you're more than some crazy per like you are a little crazy i think but you're aware what gets views and what doesn't and building your own you know social media platform correct Four out of ten effort. Two out of ten execution. Oh. You're more than welcome to try again, but I don't think it would be wise to. I, I have to say that Smug Solar is definitely my least favorite version of Solar. Oh, by far. <laughs> She's not good at that. <laughs> no, it comes off very poorly, and it's always exactly the opposite of how you want to deal with trolls. Is like, hey, I'm more successful than you, and you guys shouldn't make fun of things I'm sensitive about. So, okay, well, right? Yeah, listen. she's she's constantly melting down, and now all of a sudden she's like, and I'm killing it. Like, well, hold on a second, which is it? I'm confused because yeah. now I feel like I'm allowed to make fun of you. It's also hard. Like, is there no self awareness? Let's say it's all legitimate. Is there no part of Solar that says, "Listen, gang, I know that I said I'm a three thousand year old alien." that takes the form of a little boy and has the pronouns them, they. I know that's a little odd, but try and get with me, folks. Like, every time right. someone says, like, I don't really believe that, you have to be like, oh, I have so many more followers than you, bitch. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, but my thought is these people are always talking about punching up, punching down. And, True. you know, the punching down is... It, wrong and it makes you look like the asshole and you know, I'm not actually saying this don't clip that and act like I'm saying this <laughs> but now that she's bragging about her following and her success she's kind of opening herself up to like hey oh, we're punching up that I don't I don't have that many followers on TikTok so yeah no you're a celebrity we we right. have full reign to make fun of you <laughs> yes so I appreciate that solar um we have a new character in this yeah. system <laughs> we sure do. This is ridiculous. Hi, my name is Safira. I am an alter in a dissociative identity disorder system. I am 19 years old. I am a trauma holder for the system, and I am a mermaid in the inner world. She's a mermaid in the inner world, Mike. Yeah, no, I understand. She's also wearing a wig, a blue and purple wig, <laughs> which I don't think makes you a mermaid. But no, Well, that's how you know it's a real them. person, is that when she wakes up, sometimes she puts on a wig because it's a real personality that lives in her. 
My tail in the inner world is dark blue and purple, and Let's I see can it. actually swim <laughs> through the air in the inner world. Oh, oh my god, this is like a child telling you about his dream <laughs> right now. And I was swimming through the air, and Grandma was there? This is what I mean. This is disturbing that she has... It's so delusional. I mean, obviously, this is delusion. But yeah. also to get comments where it's like, hey, I think this is kind of fake what you're doing. To be like, oh, yeah, well, I have 82,000 followers, so fuck you. <laughs> Although I do have plenty of water in the inner world that I can also swim in. Ooh, Thank no God. one told me to be boasting. I am actually a fusion <laughs> of two different altars in our system, shadow and blue. Don't. Wait, don't you dare little... tell me Shadow's gone. <laughs> no, Sa Sa Shadow's still there, but he's fused with blue. Oh, well, Mike, don't any, worry. I got, I got you a card. I know how you felt about Shadow. As, as I always say, some Shadow is better than none, I guess. That's right, yes. <laughs> a while ago, um, but blue was actually present when we discovered that we are a system. I was also at one point temporarily fused with Vesper, who also happens to be my girlfriend. Um, but we have since split apart and we are much happier being two separate alters. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. This is crazier than her being a space robot because yeah. you can date within the system. How does that work? I was worried. I forgot it was part of the same video. I was going to mention it after that. I was, uh, I was stunned when I came across that. So it's like, is she performing like sex acts on herself? You know the way a children plays with toys, like you have yeah. two GI Joes fucking shooting at each other or something. Well, that that's why I wrote <laughs> down. I'm like, like, what is the fantasy here? That <laughs> yeah. this thing was dating this other thing within the inner world, which I haven't even heard the term inner world. I don't think until now. Sounds new to me, but whatever. Well, it is a little new. Yeah, you're right. So now she's in her inner world, and there's dating involved. I, I mean, this is. I thought there was only one person fronting at a time, so that would be like, ah, shit, you just missed me. Ah, he was just here a second ago. Damn well, it! We now know one person is fronting, and the rest are in back fucking and sucking each other. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now we know what's going on. I love music, especially choral music, and I love to sing. <laughs> My favorite cuisine is Japanese food, and I particularly system, love you know, vegetarian sushi and inari sushi. This is what I look like in the inner world. I have deep ocean blue eyes, freckles, and I have dark antlers. And Okay, so now she's showing a cartoon image of her, so she's full-on furry at this point. It's like, <laughs> this is what my I look like in my head, and it's like this yeah. really attractive whatever... Uh, Japanimation anime thing, but the what voice antlers? Also annoying me a little. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let's let's back this up real quick. Antlers on a mermaid. Eyes, yeah, freckles, and I have dark antlers and purple and blue hair. Ugh, cool. I don't front nearly as much <laughs> cool. as I used to, but I still do know how to work our job. Although I mostly front when we're at home. Okay, that's so funny. She she said that because I wrote down a note. 30 seconds in, like, when was the last time we saw her at work? What is she doing now? Is she still functioning <laughs> in society? So it was, it was good to hear that, uh, what is this thing called? Sapphire or Sephira? Yeah. They, well, it's she. Funny, it's funny to hear even, like, the, the mermaid be like, but, you know, I bottle this noise up for my job, of course. I'm not right. completely insane. <laughs> I, bottle, I bottle this noise up. That's great. <laughs> I mean, I realized I'd be fired on the spot if I came and tell you I was a mermaid with antlers. So something Swim great too. We kind of we kind of glossed over that. The if you take this video, the progression of this video was, "Hi everybody, I'm a mermaid. Mm -hmm. I have antlers. I date myself, <laughs> and I like walks in the rain and a hot cup of coffee." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I got got it's real like, normal oh, somehow. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty shy. I'm not a very social person at all so i'm not really sure what else to say about myself but it's very good to make your acquaintance uh, i'm starting to think the solar is a little crazy you might be on to something i might be on to something there yeah. all right uh mike my uh I, I thought i could plug in out here but my battery life is dying <laughs> but uh, i know i'm a disaster today well, but it's been a fun it, one it has been a fun one. And what would I rather be doing right now 
than uh, WATS, my buddy Brian Mike, especially when this gentleman comes into the chat. Here comes the money! Here we go! Thanks for the super chat. Dang Lizard is another hero supporting the show that would also help feed Carl's cat in Florida. Dang Lizard 10 Euro says, was busy was busy studying the holy scripture of SJ. SJ owes $1,000 to penis wrinkle. Hashtag pay penis pronto. Oh, the turn. Yes, that is correct. What's that for? Stuttering John. So penis wrinkle had a bet with John about the lawsuit, I believe. That he wasn't going to follow through on the uh, the lawsuit to Vince the lawyer. In order for Vince to be forced to sue me and Shuli. Wow. And John goes, oh, I bet you uh, I will. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Bad news, penis. I think I suspect you won't be getting that money. <laughs> I like you're like, yeah, I, I forgot how boring this is. <laughs> so stupid. Rick C one three seven five bucks says, all these girls with DID are just trying to be crazy Jane from Doom Patrol. Mm. Do you know that Very reference? Possibly. I don't know the reference, but I assume okay. it's on point. I, I believe it because <laughs> Rick C one thirty seven is the Rick is Rick. Audiophile America five bucks says. Do we know for sure Hackride isn't one of Solar's alters? We don't. Ooh, interesting. Okay, we've been working with Solar all along. That makes the most sense of who Hackride really is, honestly. <laughs> now that I think about it, it does, it does make sense. <laughs> I do have to apologize to Hackride. Uh, I was gonna get, I was gonna get some brackets in, on uh, you know for the tournament. Oh yes, I got and one I've in. Been, I've been traveling this week, and and it's just been nonstop shit. So I didn't get a chance to. Complete my brackets. Sorry. Uh, if you watch Puzzle Box tonight, I think he'll forgive you. Well, we'll see. Well, to, I mean, the people, I guess. <laughs> El Molder One gifted one membership. Thank you, El Molder One. Turn on gifted memberships, and you can be gifted a membership from these people and get to watch the uh, the bonus material. Thank you very much for that. Kitty Two Bucks. How do they know that they are in a system? Well, they somehow communicate with each other. You know what? I can't answer that question. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was I mean, going to start to answer that. When they get done fucking, they have to talk about something, you know? It can't all be <laughs> yeah. hot Pillow sex talk. with each other. <laughs> Pillow talk is how they find out they're in a system. <laughs> Chris Onion with five Australian dollars says, Carl, your opinions on police interactions are fucked. You should not be polite and go along with whatever they want to do. Real kumia cuck behavior. Well, I understand what you're saying, and I, I have been very easy on the police the last few months, and I apologize for that. Um, but part of the reason is that now that they have cop cams on them in the States, mm -hmm. the police are held accountable. Right. So they've changed their ways, it seems to me. And also, maybe not maybe not do everything they say, but there's a middle ground between that and poking them in the chest and saying, listen here, pig. <laughs> yeah. Very good point. Okay, I'm about to die. Nate G, swimming through the air, you mean flying? Yes, that's what that means. For sure, Dennis in East Boston, five bucks, says, Mike, can you explain Justin's weight loss technique? We're all still confused. Oh. Also, the real question is, how y'all doing this fine, fine evening? I, I don't know. I don't know if we have time for this, Carl, because it'll take yeah, me a while to try don't. and explain. But uh, my buddy Justin Trudell is trying to lose weight. He's in a weight loss competition, and he was eating a 3,000, actually maybe 5,000 calorie meal at Olive Garden the other day. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's not going to do it. <laughs> it's loaded with carbs on top of it. Oh, yeah, and cheese. And Maui County GIS became a member. Thank you very much for that. Matthew Rally, five bucks. says, Carl, do you think Mike talks too much on all shows or just the Blind Mike Project? I think Blind That's Mike talks. That's my show. <laughs> I think Blind Mike talks <laughs> just the right amount. KJ, 20 bucks. Ever notice these systems never turn on each other? Yeah, they all seem to get along. They're a happy family when they're not sure. fucking. <laughs> That'd be great if there was a breakup, like a big uh, blow up between two of them. <laughs> Batacarati, two bucks, says, also mermaids can't have gross teeth. Checkmate. Oh. You got that. By the way, I, I'm pretty that. sure she doesn't want you talking about her teeth. She gets very upset with that. Do not comment on our teeth. Kitty, two bucks, says, do an IQ test with SJ. We tried. We tried. Uh, yeah, we, I actually did. Rocco Orby, 2002, five bucks, says, a mermaid eating vegetarian sushi. Now that's crazy. Yeah, we glossed over that. She goes, my favorite food is Japanese food, especially vegetarian sushi. <laughs> it's not sushi. Uh, Rick C137, two bucks, says, it's a comic book slash series on HBO. Hmm. All right. Never, never checked it out. I have not seen that one. El Mulder, five bucks. Super sticker. Thank you very much. 
Koof two bucks says, thank you for not killing yourselves. Koof, thank you for not killing yourself and for being here to donate $2 to the cause. We appreciate it. El Mulder won five bucks. I heard that Howard Stern once offered Chili the Jackie chair. I heard that too. And finally, <laughs> bad at credit, two bucks. I'm just trying to drain your battery. I know everyone's fucking with me because you can see that I'm just trying to get through the day here Guys, and make donating. this happen. Your call has uh, to stay. <laughs> uh, I have a voicemail. Hey, Carl, this is for Who Are These Socials? I just want to say, hey, Blind Mike, I'm really loving your shows, Blind Mike Project, and Why Are You Laughing? Thank you, buddy. I haven't gotten through a lot of the back catalog of Why Are You Laughing, but I was wondering if you would be interested in doing a Leslie Nielsen episode. Ah, yes. I thought that dude was pretty funny, and I bet you there's a lot of ground to cover there. All right. Don't call me back or whatever you're supposed to say on this one. Later. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look into it. I don't know much about Leslie Nielsen's life, but he is obviously hilarious in a lot of those movies. We did do a Fred Willard episode, Fred Willard episode, who I think is kind of a similar figure in comedy, so we could probably pull off of Leslie Nielsen. Oh, you definitely could. Uh, Kitty gifted one. Thank you very much. Reverend Shit's any powerful pooper. Two bucks. Carl is probably a queer. Who are these sexualities? Thank you, everybody, for coming on. BlindMike.net is where you want to go. Thanks for being here. Anyway, Guys. social media, I'll catch you later, man. <laughs> my, my, my battery's about to die. I have a lot of plugs to give. <laughs> Drunk Engineer, read this, Carl. You got I'm it. Drunk Engineer. Show. Oh, fine. They keep coming in. <laughs> <laughs> like rolling so two bucks. Kelly rolling here in Rochester as Buff Chicken Sushi. Dang lizard two euro says SJ is the holy karma will drain your battery. God damn it. All right. See you guys. It's Hulk Hogan's club in about 45 minutes. That's how Stay far it is. Dry from out there, pal. <laughs>